you brought something in my car. Yo, why am I getting locked up? Is that right? Lower your voice or you're going to jail. Listen to this guy. Okay. Yeah, well, I talked to pigs. You. They got your fat, lazy, non-relevant, non-factor out here filming highway patrol. A man stands his ground as a police officer approaches. Tensions rise as the officer demands identification. The man reluctantly provides his name and information. What do you want? Who are you talking to? Me. What do you want? I'm doing fine. For what? What are you retinal scanning me for? Did you did you get consent for that? It's none of your business what my name is. All I got is DAS. Does that ring a bell? Yeah. Sixty one. 0621? Yeah, that's me. Wayne Allen Scrivens. The officer explains the reason for the encounter, mentioning uttering threats, domestic related incidents, and warrants. The man challenges the officer's actions, questioning their motives. Why are you IDing me? Wayne Allen Scrivens? Yep. You've got a warrant for your arrest out of Alberta. Yeah, I do. Domestic uttering threats. So what? You utter threats against a woman, sir? So what? Got a warrant for your arrest. So, arrest me then. Uttering threats, domestic related, two counts. So this is what you do? I just want to talk to guys that have warrants. Yeah, I talk to criminals. The situation escalates as they exchange words with the man expressing disdain for the police. Yeah, well, I talk to pigs who get into fights with other bag pigs. Have a good day, Dwayne. How many bag pigs have you turned in, you the officer, undeterred, emphasizes their duty to apprehend individuals with warrants. In a small town, there's a police officer named Sergeant Joffrian from Waveland Police Department. He seems to forget the law about filming in public and keeps violating the rights of a person who's recording him. One morning, as the sun shines down, the officer approaches a man who's peacefully standing on a public sidewalk. Hey, man, you got Good morning, gentlemen. God bless our homeless veterans. All right, cool. Airport. All right. You got your ID on me? What for? Vagrancy. Vagrancy? Yes, sir. Got some uh, complaints on here that you're begging for food, money, stuff like that. That's not true. Okay, well, I'm just out here for that reason. Okay. The man is there to support homeless veterans, but the officer questions his intentions. The officer asks for the man's ID, and the man wonders if he must show it. He questions if it's required. The officer insists, saying it's necessary, and threatens jail if the man doesn't comply. So, do you have your ID on you? Am I required to give you ID? Yes, you are. And what happened if I don't give it to you? You're going to jail. Period. Really? Yeah, really. Sir, I'm standing on a public sidewalk engaged in constitutionally protected Correct. activity. Correct. But I'm letting you know you're going to go to jail, no questions asked. Even if I'm standing on a public yes, sidewalk? Yes. How many times do I got to explain to you? So, if I don't give you ID, I'm yeah, going to jail. You're going to jail for failure to identify. Can I just leave? If you wish to do so, but I need to identify you. I don't wish to do so. I'd like to stay here. You're, you're, not going, you're not going to stay here, period. The man reminds the officer about his constitutional rights, but the officer doesn't listen. He tells the man to leave, threatening jail if he doesn't. I'll let you know. Do I have to leave? Yes. Why? Because I'm instructing you. I'm giving you a lawful order to leave. And if I don't leave? You're going to jail. I'll go to jail. For failure. And your officer, Sergeant Joffrian? Sergeant Joffrian, Officer right. Andrews. Right. Y'all have a good day. You got your ID with you? So if I don't go, if I don't leave, I'll go to jail. Yep. Give me your ID if I don't give you ID, I'll go to jail. Yes. Even though I've explained to you that I'm engaged in constitutionally protected activity. I don't activity. care if you explain it to me or not. Safeguarded by the First Amendment. There's okay. freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and freedom of assembly on a traditional public forum. The steps of City Hall. Correct. I'm yes. not begging for you money. Got your ID? I'm not begging for money. Okay. You got your ID. Do I need to show you my ID? You need to show me your ID. Yes, sir. Or what? You're going to jail. <laughs> well, you guys, I tell you, man. I'm going to put you on notice before I show you my ID and before you do this. No, you're going to show me your ID right now. Okay. You can do whatever you wish. I don't know. You guys are man. Okay. That's your opinion. You guys are really are awesome. a bag of handers. Okay. That's part of the fine. Let me get back up here. I'm trying to leave. The man decides to comply, saying he'll give his ID to avoid jail. The officer, displaying his authority, doesn't seem to understand the Constitution. George 600... Is my ID going to tell you if I'm committing a crime or not? What does it matter if you commit a crime or not? 
you have to identify and reference your complaint. This isn't some free will state, man. This is how it is in the state of Mississippi. So you don't have freedom and, in the state of Mississippi? If, if you don't like it, you can go back to Florida. Period. All right, well, let me have my ID and I'll go back to Florida. I'll give you ID once it comes back. I don't want to go to jail. And you're a veteran. I'm a veteran, yes. What sir. did you serve? Huh? Where did you serve? That's none of your business. All right. Did you take an oath up upholding defend the Constitution when you served? I absolutely you, did. Yeah, and you're not doing that right now. Okay, that's your did opinion. Did you take an oath up upholding defend that, the Constitution that, that, when that you is your opinion. became a cop? That is your opinion. Then you're not doing it right now. That's your opinion. It's a situation that raises questions about freedom and the law in Mississippi. In our next video, we find ourselves in League City, where some police officers may end up paying a hefty $25 million for a big mistake. They wrongly arrested two innocent parents right in front of their kids, and it all went down without any good reason. These officers didn't bother to tell the parents their rights or show any warrant. They just swooped in and took them away. The parents were left wondering what in the world was happening. What I did, you have a warrant out for your arrest for, for interference with public uh, no, no. They even had a chat with the police chief about it, but that didn't clear things up either. It all started on September 2nd, and things got pretty heated when the parents asked for a warrant. The officers said they were arrested for interfering with a public officer, but it seems like a big misunderstanding. By Officer Trocia say to the point where she called me, I asked him on the phone as I was in the old Campo 90 miles away, this occurred on September 2nd, that he either provide a warrant or I would take this up with the police chief the next day. Now, there's a lawsuit in the air, and we'll have to wait and see what happens next. There was this person who found themselves in a strange situation. They were approached by the Locust Grove Police in Henry County. The reason? They were simply chatting on their phone out in the open. I got any, I, I you hadn't gotten any gas. You hadn't gone in and gotten any food. Yeah. You parked at a gas pump. Yeah. And I know, I know the tank's not on the side. It's on the other side, right? No, I know the tank is coming back. So what's, what are you doing? I'm just, I'm just chilling. I don't want to go home to you. I can't, I can't sit in the parking lot. Because I, I live out here. At first, it seemed like a big deal. But when the police checked their ID, there was nothing wrong. So, the officers asked them to finish their phone call. There was a lady cop there too, but she later lost her job. Where are you? You have some ID? Let me see your ID. Where is it in the car? Uh, it's on me, but what's, what's the car? Let me see your I mean, you can make it super difficult, but you do no, make it. No, I'm, I'm just wondering why, why y'all, I've literally been on the phone just talking. I know. That's Go ahead and get your ID, and while while you give us your ID, she can speak with you. But you need to identify yourself, so go ahead and get your ID. So oh. right now what it falls under is ordering. So ordering, yes. Yes. Because, like, if you were, like, getting gas, waiting on somebody, like, if you were doing anything other than just kind of, like, hanging out, it wouldn't be an issue. The person was a bit confused. They had been on the phone all this time. The officers explained that this area had a reputation for bad stuff happening, like drugs and crime. They just wanted to make sure everything was okay. Well, I've, I've been on the phone. The, we know. This area is known for narcotic activity. It's known for criminal activity. So that's the reason, another reason why we're speaking to you. We want to make sure that's not afoot. Right here, people will park. They'll go over there, they'll wait right here, they'll wait for somebody, they'll, they'll do shit like and that. And what? So. Under a street You have no idea. So, well, yes. I, I, I live out here. I, I, do, I believe you do. It. You know, you have your ID with you. Is the, is the license, or is the address on your license current? Is that no. Your, okay. In the end, they asked for the person's ID, wondering if the address was correct. But the person's ID didn't match the current address. There's an officer who takes issue with a person filming in a public space. They're about to learn a lesson about the law, something they should have known beforehand. The person filming asserts their right to be there under the First Amendment. The officer demands identification, but the person argues that the First Amendment doesn't require it. You can't be here taking pictures. You hear me? Why not? Because you can't be here. Says who? Says me. Says the First Amendment, I can. You can't? You have ID? The First Amendment says that you I can. You have identification? No, no, I'm not breaking no law. What's the law? You What's the law that says I can't be here filming? State the law, sir. The person remains firm, stating they're not breaking any laws. In the end, the officer relents and provides their badge number before leaving. The person asserts their right to continue filming, confident in their protection under the First Amendment. 
Listen to me. I What's your name and badge number? What's your name and badge number? You can see it. I can't see your keys are in the way. What's your badge number? What's your badge number, sir? 1590. Name and badge number, sir. 1982. Who? 1982. All right, you guys have a good day. Backup is called, but the person stands their ground, knowing they're not in custody and their rights cannot be violated. I could be here all I want, bro. You guys aren't going to stop me from filming. I got the First Amendment to protect me. Okay, keep going then. No, I'm not going to keep going. This is not private property. You can't kick me off this property. What's your last name? I'm not behind the walls. I'm not behind. I'm not in jail. I'm not under your authority. So you have no authority over What's me. I'm not breaking name? any laws. What's your last name? None of your business. Look at this, guys. These guys want to come out and try to intimidate me for filming in public. Look, they don't want to let it go. Now they're wasting the taxpayers' money just standing around. Why don't you get your supervisor out here? Maybe your supervisor will teach you a little bit about the uh, First Amendment today. Okay. You can't violate my rights, sir. I got rights. I'm not locked up. I'm not in there under your control. Understand that. Yeah, go call your supervisor because you're both about to get educated. It seems both officers are about to receive an education on the First Amendment. A police officer approaches this person and asks who he is. The man refuses to tell. Do you want my name? I'll give you everything. Who are you? I don't need to provide that. Yes, you do. No, I don't. If I'm asking you who you are and why you're videotaping our facility, you have to provide me with some type of identification. So do you have to any require, identification? To require identification under the law, you need to be able to articulate a crime that I'm about to commit or I have committed. Okay. You're going around, you're videotaping our state police facility for no apparent reason, and if I'm asking you who you are, you have to provide me with identification. I don't have to, it's no. It's just like anything else. No, it's not. Yes, you do. I don't. Yes, you do. In fact, your public information officer already has dealt with this here, and so has a few other officers, so... I don't care who's dealt with it. I'm asking you for identification because I want to know who you are right now. Well, and I want to know what your reason is for videotaping our facility. The officer insists, saying it's the law. But the man disagrees and mentions that filming in public is allowed by the Supreme Court. The officer still wants to know why he's filming. The man says he doesn't have to answer. Well, first of all, Supreme Court has covered that filming out in public is perfectly legal. I don't care what. The and Supreme that is not Court. a suspicion of crime. So therefore, care. you have no suspicion of crime. Listen, you can cite whatever you want. Right. Why are you videotaping? That's what I'm asking right now. I don't have to answer that. Well, I want to see a form of identification, identifying who you are, why you're outside my facility right now videotaping us. I don't have to provide that either. Why not? Why do you feel that you do not have to perform any form of because identification? Because that's the law. No, it's not. If yes, you're it out is. here and I want to know why you're videotaping our facility and you have to provide me some form of identification, you just can't come and walk away anytime you want and just come up with your things and fly them over our lot. I want to know who you are and why you're videotaping this right now. You probably want to get a supervisor or somebody higher up. Sure, here's my sergeant. He's coming out. More officers arrive, including a supervisor. The supervisor corrects the officer, saying the man can film and doesn't need to provide ID. The man accepts the apology and explains that drones are new territory for everyone. Well, and he'll tell you. Okay, no problem. Hey, Elaine. He was flying the drone out in front videotaping. All I'm doing is asking for a form of identification so we can identify who he is. He's refusing. Both your first sergeant, not a problem. Not a problem. He can videotape as much as he wants. We don't have to get not any form problem. of identification. He can videotape. Not a problem. All right. Okay. So you were wrong? Huh? You were wrong? Going with my ser sergeant? Yes, I was. So you learned something today. That's good. Okay. Don't worry about it. I'm pretty sure. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Sorry for the inconvenience. And sorry for the inconvenience. Right now with the drones, there's a lot of, uh, I guess you could say, I wouldn't say misinformation, but uh, it's an area that we're not used to dealing with. All right? Well, that's apparent. I've dealt with your troopers already yeah, on this. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you have it. Not a problem. That's why I came out here. I saw that he was talking to you, so. The, um, you probably should educate them a little bit more on it. It's, so gonna be a more... it's kind of an area that's new to everybody, and until they have legislation on it. Which there is none. Right, right. So, so. so. Sorry for the inconvenience, okay? They part ways with no more problems. In San Pablo, police officers received a call from Starbucks. They were told about a suspicious car and a woman inside. Hurrying to the scene, they found Guadalupe de Mayo inside Starbucks. They weren't sure if she was the person they were looking for. How you doing? What's going on? So, from my understanding, um, they don't have a problem with you here? 
They don't know. She's what? What? That woman, her name is Reyna. Reyna what? Okay, well, I just spoke to the employees here, and they're saying that they don't want her here either. So. I just got here. They don't know her. I just got here. This is good. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm just. Okay, 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 I'm just telling you what they told me. So if you don't leave now, we're gonna end up. Uh, I'm not. I'm not upset. I, I just got here three miss, minutes ago. Miss. That's what I'm telling you. They miss, can check miss, the cameras. Miss. Beside it's, the point. It's somebody Besides else. Beside the point. They're saying that they don't want you here. So either you can get up and go, or you're gonna be arrested for trespassing. Oh, up to you. Oh, wow. Up to you. Lawsuit. Okay. Lawsuit. Okay. <laughs> Not going to be a lawsuit with us. It's them that wants to leave. Yeah, Please yeah. leave now. That, that would be great. You see? So. The, 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 I'm going to ask you. The person looks like me. She, she's Latina like me. Miss. Miss. Wow. Now Either I'm you can Latina leave people. or you can be arrested for trespassing. Sure. What would you like? Wow. I'm not leaving. You're not leaving? You got that wrong person. Okay. <laughs> Either you can get her up and get her out of here, or she's going to be arrested. No, I'm not that. The police talked to the Starbucks employees who didn't want Guadalupe there either. They asked her to leave. Guadalupe got up, but soon, the police realized their mistake. They had the wrong person. You're sure that's her, right? Which one? The, one, the lady that's not supposed to be? No, that's, that's, that's not the lady. Oh, that's not her? No, that's not her. Oh! Guadalupe felt upset and embarrassed. In the end, Guadalupe decided to seek more than $25,000 from the city because she felt hurt and embarrassed by the incident. Miss, I apologize. There was a mis- there's a mis- No, 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 you cannot arrest me. Okay, you can't. No, 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 right now. There's nothing to arrest you for. No, no, you said you can't arrest me. There was a miscommunication. Okay, go ahead. You can't arrest me. There's nothing that- there's nothing going on here. They said you're free to stay. No, 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 I clarified it with that. No, it's not. Okay. You guys can have a nice day. I'm reporting this to the federal government. Please stay after you by protocol. I'm not concerned about it. That's fine. You guys have a nice day. Good day. Good day. The police left, and Guadalupe was left recording the whole thing. A police officer sat in his car, munching on his lunch. A man approached him, complaining that his bright spotlights blinded him. Surprisingly, the cop agreed to turn them off. I'm good. I hate to bother you while you're eating your lunch here. But man, your, your, your spotlights are blinding the crap out of me when it went by. I even got 15% window tint on there, so. Okay. Will you turn those off? I will. Okay. Your spotlights are blinding the crap out of me when it went by. I even got 15% window tint on there, so. Okay. Will you turn those off? I will. Okay. However, the man started teaching him about laws. The cop explained they used the spotlights to observe behavior. Unconvinced, the man argued it was profiling. After some talk, the cop finally turned off the spotlights. Yeah, it's 316-233 as a statute. You're actually committing a violation right now by doing that. Okay. So, um, I mean, any time that that spotlight hits any portion of those mirrors, windshields, or anything like that, it basically is a mile, it's a violation of statutes here. Okay. So. The man had made his point, showing that sometimes a simple conversation can bring change. Next up, let's revisit a scene from Channel 4's past. It's a throwback moment that deserves another look. In this clip, we have someone known as Elmo, and he's quite adamant about something going into his car. Elmo seems concerned that this item could get broken if it's touched by someone else. He urges the person to place it in his car, emphasizing the importance of doing so. In my car, you know I could break it, right? Because if you it's break my it, car. if you touch if it, it goes in my car, I can break it. Okay. And the, so put it in my car if you want it's to. It's not in, in your car, car. Sure. exactly. I bet you won't go in my car. I'm not going. Why I bet would I do you that? won't go in my car, like I said. So since you're so tough and so smart, Stanley, like I said, put it in my car. No. It will get broke. Put it in my car. As the situation unfolds, Elmo insists that the item should remain where it is possibly suggesting that he'll handle it through the mail. He's focused on ensuring that this matter is taken care of properly. Can I get the ticket, Thank you, please? Sir. Have like a good I said, day. put it in my car, Stanley. Right, you can give me the Thank you. Okay. All right. You want to use your pen? Okay, sir. So by signing into an automation of guilt, it just promising you you're going to take care of the citation. Okay, like I said, hold on, leave it there, leave it there. Court's going to send you everything in the mail, okay, sir? If you don't get nothing from the mail, it's their responsibility to take care of it. Court information is here, okay, So this sir? is for Cron 4 News? Stanley E. Roberts. This is for people behaving badly on Channel 4. What about people overeating on Channel 4? 
How about that? All Thank right. you, sir. Build up your 1-800. Drive safe, sir. 1-800, get down, chubby butt. Have a good day. You too, fat Thank you, sir. No problem. Towards the end, Elmo directs some comments towards the other person, expressing his thoughts about their job and lifestyle. What kind of car are you driving? Oh, by the way, the ticket is five hundred dollars. It don't matter. I can pay it. I, what you drive? What oh yeah, you don't drive? worry about what I drive. What you drive? I bet you don't drive nothing nice. I bet you that, and you already fifty something years old. I bet you don't drive yeah. nothing nice. I bet you don't drive nothing nice. I bet you couldn't afford it if you got one though. Oh, All you can afford is food with your fat, lazy. You, that's why you're out here videotaping. You ain't even on a real job. Thank you, why sir. don't they have you down there filming what's going on in Oakland? All the riots. And they got your fat, lazy, non-relevant, non-factor out here filming highway patrol. That tells you what, how much you're worth it. Regardless of the conversation's content, one thing is clear. Elmo is determined to protect whatever belongs in his car. In our next video, a 17-year-old encounters a police officer who seems puzzled by the teenager's refusal to cooperate. The officer questions the young person's age and where they're coming from. Were you at the e-cig store? Hey, who? The e-cig store? E-cigarettes? How old are you? 17. You're 17? Where are you coming from? The rec. The what? The rec. The rec center? Yeah. What's your name? Why? Because I'm asking you for your name. No, I don't have to give out my name. Yeah, you do, because I'm investigating a suspicious person, and you have to give me your name. Suspicious ain't a crime, though. I just came from the wreck. Okay. Despite the officer's persistence, the teenager refuses to give their name, asserting their rights. What is your name? I don't need to give out that. I didn't, be, I didn't commit no crime. But I know the law. I'm not dumb. I didn't say you were dumb. Then why are you trying to play me for stupid? I'm not. Too Call your sergeant. For yeah. what reason? Because I asked. I'm, I asked you. That's your policy, ain't it? I believe you. Then why you keep questioning me if I haven't done nothing? Well, now that I'm looking at your pants, I see they're black. And I was told they were blue pants. So, I mean, no reason to get all hyped up with me. The situation escalates, and tensions rise as the officer becomes frustrated with the teenager's unwavering stance. Two officers are up to no good they pulled over four innocent folks for speeding. The officers pretended to find something suspicious in the car, but they actually planted it there. The people in the car are worried and confused. Yo, you were just playing something in my car? Bro, step back. Excuse me, step wait, back. hold on. Step back. back. Yo, he placed something in my car, yo! He placed something in my car! Yo, why am I getting locked up? The officers act like they're disappointed for not finding anything, but they're just pretending. They're not happy because the people aren't letting them do their job properly. Nah, we, we didn't find it, but he's bugging out, so I guess now it's gonna be OGA, he's not letting us do our job, you know? Stand back, please, thank you. All right, this was in the back seat on the floor. So I might want a cigarette, it's lit. Just had to put it out. Later, one officer talks secretly with the cop who planted the drugs. It seems they're planning something shady. Hold on to this. Huh? I gotta hold on to this. <laughs> the situation is getting worse, and it's clear that these officers are not doing the right thing. In a quiet neighborhood, cops approach a man in his car and tell him he can't be there. The man insists he lives nearby. I live here, sir. Right around the left corner there to the right teal blue house. Do you have license? I do, but I'd rather not show it if I'm not obligated by law. Well, I need to prove that you live on the street. You're saying I'm obligated by law? I can't prove you don't live on the street, right? You can run my tag and see the address pulled up on it. We're going to make it that complicated? Are you? I don't know. <laughs> they ask for his license, but he hesitates, saying he'll only show it if the law demands. They argue about proving his address. Frustrated, the man suggests they check his tags, but they refuse. I can see the address pulled up on it. We're gonna make it that complicated? Are you? I don't know. I'm trying to get home. If you wanna make, if you wanna make it complicated, go ahead. Eventually, he steps out of his car and engages a cop, using logic to teach him some lessons. The situation escalates, turning into a battle of words and wits. There was a varsity football player driving down the road. He had his bright lights on, which caught the attention of Officer Wonders from the Newton Police Department. 
the officer pulled him over because it's not legal to have those bright lights on within city limits. Hi there. How you doing, sir? Good, how are you? Good. My name is Officer Winters with the Newton Police Department. The reason I pulled you over is because you have your bright lights on. Yeah, I have a, I have a headlight out, so I just keep my brights on. Okay, well that's not legal. Oh, it isn't? No. Yeah, I turn, when, a car, when a car comes by, I turn them off, but like, well you didn't with me. The young man apologized, explaining he tried to turn them off when other cars came by, but he didn't do it with the officer's car. Officer Wonders asked for his license, registration, and insurance, but noticed something wasn't right. Oh, you weren't close enough though. You were like, you're, close you're enough? yeah, you're a while back. It has to be within 500 feet. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. And you're not bad. supposed to have your brights on in the city limits. My fault, my fault. You got your license, registration, insurance yeah, with you? Yeah, I got you. The football player showed signs of being impaired. To check, the officer had him blow into a device. Afterward, he read him his rights, asking when he last smoked weed. The young man said he couldn't remember. No, because you're showing some very strong signs of impairment. Am I? All right, what I want you to do is make a tight seal around this and blow outwards like you're blowing up a balloon, okay? Cool. All right. You ready? Yep. Okay, you can relax. Um, so I'm going to read you Miranda, okay? When's the, right now you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one will be appointed to you before any question, okay? Yes, sir. When's the last time you smoked weed? I remember that. Tonight? No. Oh. Okay, well, I, would, no I, tonight, I think right? it's tonight. I've had no weed tonight. What? Why do you think it's tonight? Why do you think I smoke weed? I blew zero, so now you're trying to think I smoke weed. That's what's going on. You can't do that, man. You really can't do Absolutely that. Absolutely, I can. Is he allowed to do that? Yes, he is. Even though the test showed zero, Officer Wonders was determined to send him to jail. When released, the football player posted the video on social media, and the whole town shared similar stories. Posted the video on, to Facebook and all of that. The whole town was telling me about their similar, you know, experiences and all that. And if if I'm seeing all these comments about people saying they're dealing with the same thing from the same police department, we we got some we got a mess to clean up. And I feel like that's my job. With the exposure I got, I got to clean up the mess, and I'm okay with doing that. Well, with the publicity my video got, I really hope. You know, it upbrings the corruption in Newton and other towns that have this, like similar issues. But yeah, with the exposure of the video, I think it should just show them, hey, we need to do something better. You know, because what they're doing is not. He hoped his video would expose the problems and corruption in Newton and other towns. He believed that change was needed to make things right. In this video, there's a police officer who decides to walk onto someone's private property without permission or a warrant. The property owner, a man, notices the officer's presence and asks if he has a valid reason to be there. What's up, man? You all right? Oh, we're great. You have a warrant or a reason to be on private property? The officer replies that he's just checking things and doesn't seem to understand the importance of permission or a warrant. The property owner explains that they've had problems with officers coming onto their property without permission before even though they've never met the officers personally. Okay, well, I'm just saying, I just, it's, we've had problems with being bullied here in our yard and officers have, coming. Have I bullied you? I, they, have I ever bullied you? I've never even talked to you. It doesn't matter. I'm just, what, what the, that, neither, neither did the ones that came in my yard and bullied me. They've never met me before either. Okay. Well, okay. Have I bullied you? I didn't say you did. I said the officers that have been coming through my gate without a warrant. Okay have been bullying me in my yard, okay. whether I've met him or not. He questions the officer about why he thinks it's okay to enter private property without proper authorization. The officer seems dismissive and insists that it doesn't matter whether the gate was unsecured. He believes he has the right to enter. Well, You're a police you officer. You're in my yard. I want to come over here, so I'm checking on you. Y'all all right? We're great. I don't... Y'all good? That's why I've said, why are you in my yard without I a warrant or cause? Did you not listen? Does that give you right to come on That's private? An unsecured gate? I can check on. Yes, sir. So okay. you could come through Maybe an unsecured gate with, without a warrant. You could come Stop. on private property without Stop. a warrant, just because you want to. The property owner disagrees. 
emphasizing that it's still private property and no one requested the officer's presence or gave permission. I'm just asking, that's what you're telling me. Your questions. If it's unsecured property, I'm making sure that everything is all right, okay? Uh, I don't think so. Don't no. Think so? Okay. Un unsecured? Okay. That's a closed okay. gate. That's no, a sir, it wasn't. That wasn't still doesn't matter. It's still private okay. property. You know okay. the property line. Yes, sir, I do. It was an unsecured gate. But nobody requested your, your presence here. So you came through without a warrant or request or permission. All right. The video highlights the property owner's concern about privacy and the officer's lack of understanding regarding property rights and the need for proper procedures. Two young men were at a gas station, pumping gas when police officers approached them. The officers seemed to be singling them out, asking questions without a clear reason the young men were puzzled and frustrated, wondering why they were being bothered, despite their protests and explanations that they were not from the area and had done nothing wrong. The officers continued to question them. I'm not from out here. I know, but have you been arrested before? No. Why? Why are you guys messing with us right now? Yeah, because I, I literally watched you pull up into here. Look at me, funny. I I never seen you. The officers claimed that the young men looked familiar due to their hair and masks, but the young men had never seen these officers before. How do we look familiar if we're wearing masks? His hair. His hair. There's not a lot of people got hair like that, man. You think I lived here and you harassed me before? No, I mean, you look familiar, problem? so I wasn't too sure. That's all. Is it okay if I pump my gas? Because what's up? we haven't what's done up? nothing wrong. Oh, that's cool. Are you guys, any of you guys on probation or parole? Nope, I ain't on probation or parole, man. No? Yeah, man. You, I'm not messing with you. Yeah, you are. You just said I look familiar and I'm wearing a mask. How do I look familiar behind a mask? His hair? How does his hair look familiar? Like, that's... Like, we're not from nowhere, man. Like, we don't know you guys. Come on, knock that shit off. You're harassing us. Bro, we're the only people of color over here. As the situation unfolded, the young men expressed their discomfort and a desire to continue with their errands, such as getting food. They felt harassed and uneasy with the officers around. We're heading to get some food that you guys are slowing us down from. Oh, yeah? But we don't feel safe with you guys around here, man. I have a drink, you know? Where are you guys getting food at? Y'all, uh... Where are you guys getting food at? Y'all, uh... Despite their innocence, they couldn't understand why they were being subjected to such treatment. In a tense office scene, the senior police officer's expression turns serious. He looks at his employee, disappointment evident in his eyes. The officer knows that his trust has been betrayed. Moody, I understand that you've offered your resignation, is that correct? With a heavy heart, he decides to take action ending the employment that had lasted nearly three years. The officer knows that this decision is necessary, for the employee has crossed a line. Have you offered your resignation or not? I can keep my job right now. Well, you can't keep your job, okay? So let me just make it easy. You're fired. You're no longer an employee here. You understand? He mentions a serious offense involving a prohibited item in a correctional facility, which has led to an impending arrest. You've betrayed the trust of every citizen that we have the privilege to serve. And you've betrayed the trust of the brave and selfless men and women that you've worked alongside for nearly three years. So as of this moment, you're under arrest for bringing a prohibited item, a cell phone, into a correctional facility. That's a third degree felony. You have any questions about that? No, well, you're going to be cuffed. First thing I want you to do is stand up and take that uniform shirt off. You don't deserve to wear it. In a final act of authority, he instructs the disgraced employee to remove the uniform, a symbol of their lost honor. There was a person who found themselves in a tough situation. They were on the road, and a police officer was treating them unfairly. The person decided to speak up. The police officer was enforcing municipal codes related to pedestrian obstructions. The person was adamant about their rights 
demanding the officer call their supervisor for clarification. All right, well, kiss my ass. You're not seeing shit. Okay, listen, ma'am. No, bro, you it's, listen. It's municipal code 63102B25 and B21. Those that are the what? sections that- That what? One of them is obstructing pedestrian right Which are what? Infractions, right? Yeah, okay, so- They're not I, criminal offenses. Here's what you need to do. Man. No, bro, don't if tell me what I need to do. Here's okay. what you need to do. Call your supervisor. My supervisor's right here. Well, partner. call him. I don't need to talk to you. I just talked to my- Call your supervisor. Partner. Call your supervisor. Hey, supervisor, can you get your partner? He's hostile. Can you get him? He's treating me like a criminal here. They're detaining me and telling me I'm not free to go. And under no criminal offense, he's telling me it's infractions, which I'm able to leave for. You're not listening to us. You're not listening to what anyone is saying. How do you know? Because I've been. I, I just talked I've, to you. I've right. just talked to these. I just, no, you I didn't. Just to them. No, you did. Them. They did not tell you anything bad about me. Like I'm saying. Like I'm saying. No, bro. Don't make I, up stuff. I, I, don't make up stuff. Hey, I, guys, did you tell him I, I wasn't I, listening? Tensions rose as the officer resisted. But eventually, the supervisor arrived, understanding the situation better. They discussed the infractions and clarified that the person could leave after receiving some tickets. What's going on right now, Nick? Mm, okay. Yeah, they're giving me infraction tickets and then I'm free to go. Yeah, so parking ticket, no warning, and then you're free to bounce. If you keep the car parked, I don't think you are. No, I'm about to leave okay, as soon cool. as you guys say I, I can leave. That's about it. Hey, yeah. I respect you, oh. so... Because you've been nothing but respectful. I mean, you, I mean, I understand the frustration, but I mean, I can see the frustration that you're still respectful towards me and I respect that. Respect I've been respect. going through it. You can I look know. it up. You can hey. look it up with the port. You can look it up yeah. with the city. I've been going through it. And I'm the yeah. only guy that has my um, licenses for everything. I showed them my sidewalk vending permit and they got upset about it because they were like, we can't even tell them anything. And then now they're trying to give me infractions for my car and my vehicle, so. Alrighty. Well, I mean, either way, I mean, you, it sounds like you already had the plan set up. You're gonna fight the parking ticket. Mm -hmm. Morning, so easy day, and all right, so. Mm -hmm. Cool. As soon as they're done, man. I appreciate you, no, sir. No, of course, man. All right, sir. And then this is gonna be your copy right here. Cool. Any questions for me? Nope. Was this educational? No. Uh, that's a it was supposed you, to be. Man, right? that, you asked me if I had a question, buddy. Yeah, I mean, like... No, nope, no like smart answers, you know, bro. Go on know, with your day. Take care. As the encounter ended, the person thanked the supervisor for being respectful, despite their frustrations. On a busy street, a police officer pulls over a concerned father for driving too closely behind his patrol car. The officer takes offense and feels upset. The father, who is recording the incident, tries to ask a question, but is met with a hostile attitude from the officer. I'm recording too. I asked you a simple question. If you have a attitude, you a that's your problem. You okay? On my door. Yeah, you saw me and you rolled you your window mean, up I when I came. Hold on a second, right okay? No. You rolled your window up no, when I, I walked care. up, I don't okay? Care. So I knocked on your window, stuff. okay? You, you are not a cop. You don't need to be I behind you. The officer claims that the father doesn't have the same privileges as a cop and instructs him to leave. The father refuses to comply, insisting that he doesn't need to do anything and that he's waiting for something. So you need to leave no, right I now. No, I don't need to do anything. You I'm got on a five seconds street. to leave. Okay, there's no reason for you to be behind this traffic stop. No reason. I'm okay. On a public street. No reason. Okay. It's not a public no street. No reason. Not okay. Do you always stop road? behind cops when they pull people over? I ain't up right behind you. Okay. You don't need to be here. I ain't. You to be here, okay? Sir. You need to go. No, I okay? don't. I'm waiting on my son. Right, He's fine. right back. Tensions rise, and the encounter becomes increasingly heated as the officer threatens the father. Okay? You don't need to be here. I ain't you don't need right to be here, you, okay? Sir. You need to go. No, I okay? don't. I'm waiting on my son. Right, He's my right back to Wilson. Leave. Leave. That's the part. Stay. 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 Hey! Stop the situation quickly escalates, highlighting the dangers of some officers believing they are above the law. In the midst of the chaos, the father's plea for justice is met with aggression as he continues to record the troubling encounter. There's a police officer in his car. He almost hits a person walking. The person talks to the officer, and he gets mad. The person says they didn't hear it. Stand by. Send me another unit because another party does not know how to yield to a uh, licensed sirens and he's sitting here recording me. 
Then I'm looking at him off the road. I apologize. You almost ran me off the road. I initiated my lights and sirens. I didn't hear anything. What, you were your music on? Because I had the and lights and sirens man. on, sir. Yes, sir. You the, apologize. I apologize. He stopped abruptly. Okay, I'm not wrong. Because he stopped right. abruptly, causing me to stop abruptly, caused causing you to stop abruptly. Right. And I apologize for that. However, the lights and sirens were on. I initiated lights and sirens. If there's something wrong and you actually yeah. did it, all you say, my bad. I'm and sorry. I did. I just said, keep going. I said, said my bad. I said, I activated a traffic, I initiated a traffic stop in a marked vehicle with lights and sirens. Right. If you didn't hear the sirens or see the lights, I don't, I... I mean, you call back up for your safety, but... Well, well you don't pull up behind an officer on a traffic stop. You're, not even, you don't even know what's going you're right, I don't. So why are you saying that? Because I'm here, and what you're doing right now is against the law. ran me off the road. Okay, well, then you should have pulled over for lights and sirens. You said it on the radio that you, that you didn't yield. And it's on dash cam, I'm assuming. Just, just a disconnect, man. Sir, I'll tell you what, let her finish her business, and then we can sit down and talk. They argue a bit. The officer says he's sorry for almost pushing them off the road. Then, they talk about why the driver didn't stop. The person asks for the officer's last name, but he won't say. Yeah. What, I'm sorry, what was your last name? My last name? Yeah. Why do you need my last name? Because I'm asking who I'm talking to. You asked me who I'm you were asking talking to. You're not, well, not now you're going to be under arrest, because what you're doing is you're going to be under arrest. Listen. If you're doing illegal, I can charge you for interfering with Just give me your last name. Why? Because I'm okay. conducting business with you right now. I'm not being attorney. Okay. I'm gonna get First rid of him. Of all, I'll explain to you. Okay? Doing what you're doing right now. No, sir. She almost ran me off the road. Okay. Again, you didn't yield to lights and siren. You she came out. She was next to me and stopped and almost ran me off the road. Okay. What are you talking okay, about? Okay, listen to me. You asked my my reasonable, articulable suspicion. It's I, not I'm a probable not cause. Arrest. If you arrest me, you violate my rights. I don't want to arrest you. We have to you're ID you. You violate my rights. That's what you're gonna okay. do. We have to ID you. You understand that? Yes, we do. You guys got a lawsuit coming. Mr. Kern, coming. just ha hang on. Just you got a lawsuit coming. Listen, let me explain to you. Mm -hmm. you. Don't get out of the car yet. The sergeant wants me to give you a ticket for obstruction, okay? I'm not going to do anything else. I Listen, he's the boss. You this is, he is the boss. I don't have to refuse if I didn't commit a crime. This isn't a stop and ID state. At this point, it is a traffic stop because you're you out on a traffic ran me stop. Off the road. Mr. You Curry, we it. just had that conversation. I did not almost run you off the road. That, that Tesla has cameras in it. So okay. You guys are going to pay for this. Okay, that's fine. the court. Mr. Curran, I apologize. The sergeants tell me to do this, so. You know, like, I know I didn't obstruct. He asked for your information and I, you didn't I give it to him. Listen, I'm just doing what I'm told to do, all right? When asked to identify himself, he refused. He was upset, rightfully so. Here's your property. Hold on, let me get this right Sure. Here. Do you want to sign or are you going to refuse? Alright, yeah. I'm going to give you a copy of it. You guys violated my rights. Do you know? Well, we'll ha all be in court. You probably don't want to be a good cop on the force. It's, I'm not trying to be a bad cop. I was literally not trying to even have any of this happen, and it's I did still, apologize. You apologize, but you're following his, his directives. He's the sergeant. Yeah, sir. but still, like you, you swore oath to the Constitution. Right. And you know what's right and wrong. And sometimes you gotta stand up to people. Listen. No. If I were right. being detained, I had no choice but to give you my ID. That's why I specifically asked. Yeah. Am I being detained? And if I'm not being detained, yeah. I'm free to go. And right. in the situation. Well, right now you're free to go. Eventually, the officer lets the person go. It was a confusing situation, but in the end, they both move on. In the video you just watched, there's a story unfolding. The police want to arrest a man, but he didn't do anything wrong. They say he was driving too fast in Miami and owes money. That's my brother right there. I, I, I want to give all my stuff to my you brother. Will. But listen, we just can have I, to do that, that, Put it down. I can't give my stuff to my brother. No, because, uh, listen, come on, Before you lock, before you lock. My brother right here. Can I give my stuff to my brother? Yeah, yes. yeah, we're going to give it to you. We're gonna, we're gonna, but we're just going to put you in touch real quick. What you mean, Wayne? What you mean, Wayne? He said, Wayne. Oh. What's up, man? Wait. Man, damn, let's just figure this out real quick. Listen, let's just figure it out. Not necessarily. Yeah. Trouble. Come get my stuff, man. Get my, get my stuff, man. You wait. Then things get crazy. They talk about calling for help, and the man says they're searching his car for no reason. It's all a big mess. Yo, able to transport. We need to call a transport. 
for nothing. He said I, he said I crossed over lane, but he's searching my car for no reason. You got no probable cause to stop the, the, the search of my car. Here, just just come from black. Here, get it here, man. Here, man. Just just stay off, we'll man. hand it off you. I know he's saying come over. Just let him get off. Black. Yeah. It's over with, man. No, it's not. No, it's not. Over. Over. Listen, I'm going to take this one off, okay? That's right there why I told you not to reach on that seat. You'd have come oh, out of that, that, you'd have been dead. You know I didn't know that was in there, man. You like That's I knew why that I told you not to reach under you your like seat. You like I knew that was in there. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't, man. I ain't you know sure. that was in there. You ain't had a point in the face, man. You ain't had a point in my face, I'm neither. I'll be so Try. I'll hey. be so Hey. Chill out. Chill out. Chill out. Chill out. Hey. You a Chill out. Listen, listen, listen. Hey. You Hey. Chill out. Back up. You a Get all my stuff, man. Hey, my man. Hey, I'm giving him my stuff. Hey. Yeah, they gave him permission. He ain't did like that. Hey, 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 but it ends without anyone getting hurt. An officer stops a person at a gas station, questioning their actions. The officer claims they were speeding and cutting through parking spaces. Hey man, you can't drive through a parking lot like that. You got your uh, driver's license insurance? Any weapons in the car I need to worry about? Oh, man. Is there any particular reason why you felt you needed to come through the parking lot like that? I didn't think I did anything wrong. I just came over to get gas. You were speeding and you cut through parking spaces. You know you can't do that. I didn't think I was doing anything, man. I'm just, I mean, you walked around. Is coming to get gas. Yep. Oh, are we going to go back and forth or are you just going to... You asked me a question. You want me to answer it or not? I'm not... If anything, I thought I was going even slower than normal. No, sir. You normally, were... people don't even park where you park. And that's the direct path to the gas pump. You almost hit that car that was turning right there. I was watching, man. As soon as you cut in front anybody. of me like yeah. that, I was like okay. looking and I watched it happen. So I come here every day. There's almost never, ever, ever anybody. So yeah, I go through there because it's the straight path from the entryway to here, which is what you're going to see everybody else do. But I mean, you know, I, I hear you, man. I, I got it. To you, it looked like I was going fast. To me, I thought I was going even slower than normal because I didn't want to get too close to you. Thank you. Okay, sit tight for one second. You can fill up your car. Go ahead and fill up your car. The person explains their usual routine of coming to the gas station daily and how they didn't think they did anything wrong. The officer mentions writing tickets, but is out of them at the moment. Okay. So. I'm not kidding to you either, man. I come here every day, dude. Look, I'm not. I send pictures of my wife the price of the gas here every right. day when I come through. Okay, look. I'm not going to write you tickets. But the only reason I'm not writing you tickets is because I'm out of tickets right now. Okay, otherwise you would be receiving a citation. For what? With the citation, I'm just curious. Disregarding traffic control device. On private property? Yes. Okay. You still, you still can't do that. It's still illegal. Okay. Despite the disagreement, Mr. Shaw is eventually released without a citation. I'm a little upset because I, I really, honestly... Sir, I watched it I... happen, but I explained it to you and then you wanted to argue with me. He came through the parking lot and cut through all the spaces. He came through so fast and whooped into here and there was a white truck. The white truck had to slam on its brakes. So I come over here. I was just going to be like, hey man, chill out. Like, chill out. Don't be like that. But he wanted to go back and forth and argue with me and give me all kinds of stuff. I didn't have any tickets and I didn't grab a rider this morning. So I was like, man, like this, it doesn't have to go this way. He kept going back and forth and back and forth. So I was like, all right. Yeah, I'll change the you have a rider? Uh, I got uh, you got paper tickets? That's what I got. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna do this a different way. So the other officer has a ticket book he's gonna let me use. You're gonna receive be receiving the citation, okay? Because I think going to jail is a bit excessive. But well, I agree with you. But I didn't have another option. I don't have another ticket book and I don't have a ticket writer with me. So we're gonna do it that way, okay? Mm -hmm. Step out for me. That scar, man, it hurt. Okay, I see you sign right here. It's not a mission. Hey, Free to go, sir. Officer Harold faces consequences for falsely detaining and arresting Mr. Shaw without probable cause. In a quiet neighborhood, a man is pulled from his home, 
surrounded by stern-looking officers. They escort him outside, ensuring there's no one else inside the house. But as fate would have it, karma catches up with these officers. Alright, just turn around, put your hands behind your back for me. And at least your fingers like you're praying. Like back further. So back further. Y157 of the UFL front. You have smoke targets and stuff. How many people are inside? Two in custody, we're going to inside. What's up, I can do this. Neighbors are calling in that you guys are breaking into them. So there's no one else inside? No. Shortly after the incident, a federal lawsuit is filed against the city of Wyoming, Michigan, the Wyoming police chief, and six officers. In Waterbury, Connecticut, Officer James Hinkle finds himself in a heated situation. At an intersection with a malfunctioning traffic light, a woman in an SUV drives past him without stopping. This sets off Officer Hinkle, and he races after her. His anger is evident as he pulls her over. I almost ran over an officer standing in the sorry. middle of the street. I, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize what was going on. That was very confusing. It's a bright yellow jacket standing in the middle of the street. What don't you understand? The town's police chief later expresses disapproval of his actions, emphasizing the importance of building trust within the community. Officer Hinkle, a seven-year veteran of the force, faces severe consequences for his behavior. We are looking to gain trust from the citizens in our community, uh, not belittle them, uh, not berate them, or not scare them. An internal affairs investigation determines that his conduct, actions, and behaviors have violated departmental policies. As a result, he is terminated from his position on January 9, 2023. The Waterbury Police Union is also aware of his termination and is currently reviewing the Internal Affairs Report. Mr. Brewer and his wife are driving home when a Haynesville police officer stops them for a broken headlight, which is against the law in Alabama. The officer asks for Mr. Brewer's driver's license and insurance. Then, he wants Mr. Brewer's phone number and social security number but Mr. Brewer refuses, saying he's not legally obligated to provide that information. Here's your driver's license and insurance card back, okay? Uh, what is a good phone number for you? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to give you that, man. You're not going to give me your phone number? I'm not legally required to give you my phone number. I've given you everything I'm legally required to give you. What about your social security number? Don't I'm not legally required to give you that. You can't ask that of me. So, so, can I get another I've, I've given you everything I'm legally required to give you, and I'm not going to answer any more questions. The officer insists that Mr. Brewer signs the ticket, which he eventually does. However, he's made to wait for another officer to arrive. Well, are you going to sign the ticket? Uh, well, yeah, I have to sign the ticket, but I don't have to give you my social or my phone number, man. I'm not required to give you that. Okay, well. But you can take me to jail if I don't sign the ticket, so I have to sign the ticket. Yeah. Yeah. So you obviously know that, right? Yes, I know that. I have to sign the ticket, okay, but I'm well, not giving you any other information other than what I've given you. You're not going to give me a phone number? I'm not legally required to give you one, man. I'm not going to give you anything I'm not legally required to give you. I've given you everything I've legally required to give you. I've done everything I'm legally required to do. I'd like to be on my way. Is that okay? All right, well, I need you to sign this. That's okay. I will sign. When the second officer arrives, Mr. Brewer explains that his wife doesn't need to show ID as she's just a passenger. They discuss the state's ID laws, and Mr. Brewer wants to leave since he's received the ticket and his record is clean. What's up? What's going on, man? Not a whole lot. Just trying to figure out what's going on with this. I'd like to get my ticket and be on the way. He said he was writing me a time. I mean, he was literally handing me the ticket, and then he went back and got in his car. I don't know what the holdup is, man. Let's, I don't know. I've been here for 20 minutes. I done signed the ticket. I gave him everything I'm legally required. Yeah, okay. I've given him everything he needs, man. I just want to be on my way. He asked for my wife's ID, and I told him she's not legally required to ID, okay. which she's not. Right. Then he asked me for my social. That's a that's federal law. He's, he can't demand my social from me. That's a violation of federal law. In the state of Alabama, it's a 
it's a stop and identify state, so technically he can ask for her ID as well. No, that's that the, the scope of his authority stops at me. I'm the driver. It doesn't matter what the state is and what the ID law is. She has to commit a crime or you have to have reasonable, articulable suspicion of a crime in order to get her ID. She's a passenger in the vehicle. He pulled me over for, for, a, for a headlight violation. He's written me my ticket. I'd like to be on my way. He's ran my information. I'm assuming I came back clean, did I not? So what's the hold up? I'd like to be on my way. There's no hold up. Can, you sign the ticket. I mean, I'm good. good. Then we're good, right? I'd like to be on my way. You're good. Coke, so I'm free to go? Yes, Thank you. Y'all yes. have a good evening. Finally, the officers let him go, and Mr. Brewer and his wife continue their journey home, relieved that the traffic stop has ended. In a peaceful neighborhood, officers from the Polk County Sheriff's Office and Lake Hamilton Police Department attempt to enter a man's home without a warrant. The man firmly refuses entry, insisting they back away from his door. He ain't got no, get away from my door, back up. You don't got no right to be here. He's not here. in the house, let us come inside the Yeah, we ain't no. got, no. you, we ain't got to let you Why come in. Because you, 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 you ain't get no play here, bro. Right, I promise chill. you. Okay. Call the judge, whoever you got to call. Get Grady here. Okay. Get your Who's supervisor here. That mail in here. Huh? You bring the black mail here, bitch. I'll put everything in my pocket on okay. it. Bitch, let's bet on it. Let's bet on it. Okay. Let's I bet on it. Mail. I bet there ain't. Let's bet on it. <laughs> and you ain't coming in to check. I bet that. Put this him in the bedroom. House. This is my house. And, and don't tell him <laughs> that we ain't got. This is his house. Come here. Come on. Well, well then keep hours, coming because he's not here. Oh well, you ain't seen him come in. I guarantee. There ain't a mail here. You're the only. Mail here, dude. You're right. You're the only one here. I'm telling you, TT is not hey, right? You got me stuck coming to my house and and asking for TT. Don't He's not here. Who are you? Like you're on our property. Who are you? Come. You're a public like servant. You serve us. No, you're not. We ain't criminals. You ain't anywhere. You ain't. We ain't. So who's mail? You. 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 You make yourself look dumb. Get that. Make that bitch look dumb. recording. Make them. There ain't a mail here. I'll and you ain't coming in. You can Here. yell, you can scream. You coming That's in. fine. No, times one, supervisor. I only want to talk to y'all. Get the supervisor. Here. He suggests they call a judge or their supervisor if they want access. The man exhibits confidence, challenging them to make a bet. He adamantly prevents them from entering his home without proper documentation. He identifies the house as his own and demands to speak with a supervisor while questioning their actions. When y'all look dumb, I want to know what's going to happen. When y'all do, if you do want to come in and you look dumb, what are you going to do about that? Yeah, right. What are you going to do about that? What is you it you're dumb? waiting on? What, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? That's what I want to know, though. Hold on, I can't, I can't, I can't even hear. What is it you think you're doing right now? What are you uh, waiting on? Okay, listen to me. Okay, we have an officer in the back. Yeah. Good. Okay. And what do you see? He did not see it. I bet. Let's yeah, bet on it, please. Okay, if you're wrong, what would you really to put on it then? If you're wrong, I'll let you come in right now. Go get more. Go get more for the for the black guy that's in here. Hey, watch get out! The, hey, hey, get the get the hey, no, get, that, you, get you, out of the way! You're stopping him! Get, from that. His Why property. are you holding? Despite their persistence, the man remains resolute, questioning their intentions and holding his ground. I'm shutting my door. Shut Do you have a warrant? If you hit him, you're going to jail. I'm not going to hit him. He needs to get out of the way. Why is he not getting off our property? Do you have a warrant to enter my property? I'm looking for somebody with a felony warrant. Do you have Do you have a warrant to enter my property? Where's the warrant? Do you have a warrant to enter my property? Where's the warrant? What are, you, what are you doing? Do you have a warrant to enter my property? No, they don't, obviously. If he's not here, you guys shouldn't have a problem with us. It doesn't matter. I still have a right. Right? Fine. Do I have my or don't I? Of course. So you do can. you have a warrant? But if he is not here, listen. All right. The, the way listen. warrants work, you will knock on doors with oh, warrants. Man. You're holding my door open what? with no oh, warrant. We're not touching. Okay, I'm going to shut it. We'll okay. see you guys in a little bit when you figure this out, all right? Eventually, the officers withdraw, leaving the situation unresolved. As the officers exit, it becomes clear that the man's family plans to take legal action against them for their perceived violation of their rights. This incident serves as a reminder of the importance of knowing and defending one's legal rights. Hold on to our final clip, which is the most scariest and most creepiest one. And if you like what you saw, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on our creepiest videos. In a quiet neighborhood, there's a 69-year-old veteran police officer named Skip. He's just minding his business on the side of the road when another officer, John Morello, walks up to him. But instead of being friendly, Officer Morello starts to act all bossy and mean. Skip doesn't even look up, trying to avoid any trouble. 
Morello tells Skip to move away and sit down. Can't even look up. Okay, well, maybe you, know you should pay see. attention. Okay. Have a seat over there. Get away from me. Sit over there. You're pushing me away from you? Yeah, I don't need you stepping up to me like that. Sit down. Stepping up to you? Sit down or I'm going to sit you down. I wasn't stepping up to you, sir. Sit okay. down. Sit down. Do you understand that? When yeah. I tell you to do something, you do it. Yeah, is that right? Okay. You're on a power trip? Is that what it is? No. Okay. I need you to listen. That's what's up. Skip doesn't understand why Morello is so aggressive. He asks if Skip is homeless, but Skip says no. Morello keeps pushing him and shouting, and Skip doesn't know why. Skip tries to explain he's just chatting with a new friend when Morello interrupts, threatening to arrest him if he doesn't lower his voice. Skip's confused and scared. Are you homeless? No, sir, I am not homeless, okay. okay? So what's going on with you today? Nothing. I'm just standing on the street corner talking to this guy I just met, and all of a sudden you're pushing me down and being real physical with yeah, me. Yeah, you know and why? I don't understand. No, I okay. don't know why. Okay? Lower your voice. Lower your voice. Really? Okay? Do I have to do this? Yes, I'm telling you the voice. Okay? Listen to me. Because I'm going to tell you one more time. I'm going to tell you one more time and you're going to go to jail. Is that right? Lower your voice or you're going to jail. Listen to this guy, okay? Do you believe in this? Lower your yes. voice or you're going to jail. I'm not. Oh, I'm you're not going to go to jail. So listen, we are going to start over again so you can learn. Go ahead and keep moving forward. I'm going to lay you out on I'm the ground. I'm just trying to get more comfortable, okay? You are going to calm down and we're going to have a normal conversation and that you're going to understand why I'm here. Okay, If tell you me. shut up and listen for a minute, you tell will me. understand. I'm ready. We were called here because you were here supposedly yelling at the cars and causing a scene. Negative. Okay. Let that, me, that, are you going to stop talking so I can explain negative, to you? Negative. Okay. You're about to go to jail. I wasn't yelling at you any cars. You're about okay. to go to jail. That is the last time that I tell you. Next time you're going to have handcuffs on you and you're going to jail. Morello finally calms down and asks why Skip was yelling at cars. Skip denies it and tries to explain himself. So what's going on with you that you're yelling at cars or whatever? I'm where are you ye yelling at cars? No, sir. Okay, Absolutely where do you live? Not. Okay? Where do you live? I live in Deland, North Deland. Okay. It's a tense situation, and Skip wonders what's going on as Morello questions him about where he lives. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated with our latest videos.